time has come to finally read Throne of Glass. I have been putting this off and putting this off because my TBR has just been so long, but I've finally given in. I've purchased all of the books, which is really exciting and worrying because if I don't like this, then I have seven books that I might not even read. I don't think I won't like this, but there is that possibility. I'm going to try not to give too much away but I am going to be saying lines and I'm going to be talking about the plot and things like that so if you haven't read Throne of Glass I would probably avoid these videos for now or if you've kind of read the first one then you can watch this video and if you've not read the rest then uh, like once they come out maybe don't watch that if that makes sense. I'm I'm excited for this. I'm scared because it is an eight book series and I've seen lots of people say that it emotionally destroys them, but it is a Sarah J Maas book, so that is to be expected, but I'm excited. A very large map with a lot going on. I've just finished chapter one. I'm intrigued. I don't know how to say her name. I think it's Selena. That's how I'm saying it in my head anyway. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments, but... That is how I'm reading it in my head. She sounds like a badass. She sounds like she can hold her own. So I'm looking forward to reading more. Okay, she's refusing to bow. Bold move. Okay, I'm sensing a love interest here. Princes are not supposed to be handsome, they're snivelling, stupid, repulsive creatures. This one, this, how unfair of him to be a royal and beautiful. I'm sensing something going on there. What are they doing in these mines if the average life expectancy is a month? Okay, she sounds really dangerous. She killed an overseer and 23 sentries before they caught her. Jesus. Hey, so I just read, I'm on chapter four now. I'm very intrigued, I'm very interested. It kind of sounds, or oh, it's giving me the vibes of like, Hunger Games almost. So I'm interested to see where it goes. I want to find out. So I'm doing the like I'm doing the romantic reading order. So I haven't read Assassin's Blade and I'm interested to find out like how she ended up in this situation that she's in once I obviously read Assassin's Blade. So I'm interested in that, but very interested so far. I haven't got much time to read anymore now, so I'll check back in with you when I've read a little bit more. It's gonna be good, I think. It's definitely a Sarah J Maas book, and I am here for it. <laughs> Starting chapter six, and some kind of interesting little nuggets of information have been said, mainly about fae and fairies. They have just had lunch and started kind of talking about it. And there was something mentioned about her having magic that no longer exists and that she had the ability for something. And then she went to sleep and woke up and there were petals and footprints. So I'm not entirely sure what that is, but that's quite interesting. I'm on chapter 11. I've we've just met the king. Sounds like a scary bloke. And he's just kind of picked off the whole competition thing. So that's where we're at. I'm still very interested. I've just got no idea what's going on and I can't get a kind of vibe about what's happening yet, so we'll see. I definitely sense some sort of like love triangle happening with, I think it's Cole, I'm calling him Cole, and the crown prince. There's something gonna happen there, I think. Okay, we're just meeting the princess, Mania. I think, I think that's her name. I'm probably saying that wrong. Oh, I do not like Caltain. Caltin? I don't know what the fuck her name is. I do not like her. If she's here to learn our ways, I should correct her so she doesn't sound foolish. Shut up. Hate her. So I may, I may have ended up having a little nap. Um, <laughs> just finished chapter 15. She has just finished the first test, um, which was just an archery test. Nothing kind of major which is exciting and it was it's kind of cool to see more about all of the different competitors and stuff that she's up against i'm unsure she's going to be able to like keep a lid on things because obviously she's better than she's making out to be and i don't think she's going to be able to keep her cool for that long but i'm excited to see like what the other tests are and what everything else is needing to do one guy has been killed and we don't know who did that i'm 
got suspicions that it's Kane, I think his name is. I think it's him, but we'll wait and see. Interesting. I'm enjoying it. It's kind of gone straight into action, unlike Akatar, where the first book is kind of a slow burn until Under the Mountain. This is just kind of jumped straight into actions. I'm on page 150, chapter 21. I'm really enjoying it so far. I can definitely see what all of the hype is about with Throne of Glass. And I'm really enjoying it more than I thought I would. I thought it would kind of just take a long time to get into anything purely because there's so many books in the series. I just kind of thought that this book especially would just be kind of bland and a bit like, oh, there's nothing going on. I'm kind of hooked already. So I'm looking forward to figuring out the rest of it i think the te second test is happening tomorrow it's a given she's going to get to the final so we've just got to wait till that i guess and just see what happens with the final and and after that there's going to be some big twist there's obviously going to be some big twist and i just can't figure out what it is which i love like i love being able to read a book and not guess when a book is too predictable i just think mm why am I reading this? So I'm really, I'm looking forward to what's coming next. I have just finished chapter 28. I'm 52% of the way through the book. Things are kind of starting to happen now. So there was this whole ball thing. She wasn't invited, had a secret door hidden behind like a tapestry in her room and that led to other parts of the castle and she found a crypt and there was a woman in there and there was this whole like thing that's happened I'm not sure now like what's the actual like plot of this book I thought it was going to be a Hunger Games type thing but I'm kind of leaning more towards this whole finding who the killer is in the castle and doing all of that and obviously she has to become the king's assassin that's the whole thing so I think that's kind of a given that that's what's going to happen. King knows who she is or King knows like yeah King knows who she is and that's quite interesting that he's not said anything so I think that's going to play a part in when it's the final two and it's those two I think that's going to play a part. It's been a couple of days since I last kind of checked in. I have read bits, I just haven't filmed because it's just been <laughs> super hectic this week. I am now about, well, I'm on chapter 40, so I've only got like a little bit left. So I plan on finishing this this morning. I'm going to do a makeup and get ready whilst I talk about what I'm thinking and thoughts so far. I think the last time I checked in was after she had found Elena in the like crypt or the tomb or whatever. Since then, bits have kind of progressed with Dorian and Cole more than anything else. There's still no idea about who the killer is that's killing all of the champions. I've got no clue on that one. The last bit that I read was after the Yulmus ball where she went like masked and Cole and Dorian kind of figured out it was her and her and Dorian spent the entire night like dancing together and then it ended with Cole, 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 I really don't know how to say his name, ended with him like looking up and seeing her like all swoony in her room. There is definitely that love triangle like progressing, stuff is still going on with that which is interesting. I didn't actually think that this book had any kind of or this series had any romance or anything like that in it so it's quite nice to have that like sprinkling throughout. The trials, she's really close now to the last, not trial, test. After the last test then it'll be the last four. Who? jewel or whatever. I think that Remington is going to sabotage her somehow because he wants the bitch to marry Dorian. So I think he's going to do something to fuck with her um, and make it harder for her to kind of win because otherwise she's just going to win. It's a given. I'm not sure what's happening with the princess. Selena caught her in the library with the word marks or like with a drawing of it or something like that and she also found them underneath her bed so i really don't know what's happening with all of that she thought that she was in charge of the like creature i don't know if it is the princess i feel like that's too obvious that it would be somebody who's been like affected by them to then take revenge on them why would she be killing the champions i know that like instills fear but i don't think it's her i also feel like i should know what those marks are i feel like we've seen them before i could just be bullshitting but i feel like i've seen them before or like heard about them before they were under her bed she's not been killed she's not been attacked she's not been anything i don't know if they're like protection marks as well and somebody is protecting her by drawing them underneath her bed part of me kind of thinks that she's being protected by somebody elena possibly but i don't know if she's even like pot like able to draw 
and like actually interact with the real world. Dorian kind of figured out that the necklace she was wearing looks like Elena's necklace. So he's obviously like clocked on to the fact that something's going on there, which is interesting because he didn't like push it too much, but he did speak to her about it. And he also got her a puppy, which is really cute. I think that's like brownie points all around. Personally, I prefer her and Dorian just because he actually seems to like not judge her too much for her past and the fact that she's like an assassin and all that kind of stuff. Whereas Cowell kind of, he's really reserved and he treats her like shit. <laughs> not like shit, but he doesn't like give her the benefit of the doubt or anything like that. And she's been there long enough now. Like, come on, dude, just give her a chance, lighten up and just have some fun with her. Like he wouldn't even dance with her. How shitty is that? My predictions. Ah, oh, this book is going to end on a cliffhanger. I can 100% predict that. Like something's going to kick off towards the end, considering I've got 20% left. We're only just coming up to the jewel. It's going to end with her either getting her freedom or because Dorian's like, he hates the fact that his dad has just killed all those Elwyn people. So I don't know if he's going to like help her escape or just say like, actually, no, this isn't right and leave. Take her with him. I feel like it's going to end with him and her deciding that actually no like we don't agree with the king so that's a possibility i also don't like that remington has like so much of a say i feel like something's gonna happen with him and the bitch i can't remember her name i really don't like her because they're gonna try and interfere with the last jewel anyway and try and make it so kane can win so that's where we're at now i'm gonna go and get a coffee and I'm gonna sit because I think I've got an hour, hour and a half left to read. So I wanna just kind of get that done this morning so that I can move on to the second book because I really do wanna make a good start on this series. That's the plan this morning is to finish Tog. <laughs> I really wanna finish it and just figure out what kind of is going on and what's gonna happen throughout the series. I'm avoiding spoilers like the plague because TikTok has obviously got onto the fact that I'm reading Tog somehow. I just keep seeing loads of like videos and I hate spoilers. Nothing more I hate than just spoilers. Gonna go and get a coffee. We're finishing this book today. Okay, coffee, book, other way around. Coffee, book, let's finish this. We are on chapter 40, page 302 of 403. So I have a hundred pages left. I'm gonna finish this this morning. I hope. <laughs> oh, she's naming the dog Fleetfoot. That's so cute. I just love how much faith she has in that even though the dogs are mutt, it's gonna beat the purebreds. This seems like an explanation for the word marks. For sacrifices to the Ridderac, don't know what that is, using the victim's blood, mark the area around it accordingly. Once the creature has been summoned, these marks guide the exchange. For the flesh of the sacrifice, the beast will grant you the victim's strength. So that to me, it's somebody wanting the champion's strength. So it could be Cain, or Cain is the most obvious because he's obviously a competitor and he wants to win but it could also be the duke possibly because earlier there were like things about him acting off and his ring like pulsing power and stuff so maybe he's like really old and decrepit and like needs strength so he's killing the competitors to get their strength possibly that's my like thinking at the moment so she's convinced that it's nehemia again i'm probably saying that wrong that's summoned the ridderat and she's just figured out that the only place or she's just decided that the best place to hide this beast would be in the chambers that she has a secret passageway in her room to but surely if it was there then she would be dead but maybe that's what the word marks under her bed were i don't know she's going down into the chambers now to try and find it i guess and prove her theory right there's someone down there and it's a man Kane. it's Kane. i fucking knew it he's been killing them all to get their strength to win and Kane's in charge of it. It's just submissed to him. Submissed. Submissed? Sub it's just bent on knees to him. <laughs> no one, no one human could move that quickly, as if he would know more than shadows and wind. Did he just winnow? Is he Faye? No. He's just locked her in there with it. Fuck yeah, she's just stabbed him with the sword of from the tomb. So Elena knew that something was gonna happen. So she showed her where a sword was. She took her or someone directed her to that tomb. So she knew that there would be a sword there. So she's just killed the beast, the Ridderac. That was why they brought her to the tomb on San Huon, wasn't it? So she could see the Maris and have a way to save herself. 
How did Nahima know where the chambers were? How did she know to find her? And how does she know put word marks on her arm? Because she's obviously been poisoned. How does she know? Okay, chapter 43. Okay, so Nahemia is a good one. We're just gonna brush past anything bad I've said about her. You bear many names, so I shall name you as well. She kissed the assassin's brow. I give you this name to use with honour, to use when other names grow too heavy. The spirit that could not be broken. Uh-oh, the king's back. This only means shit. Don't tell me the king knew. It's almost like he's surprised to see her there because Kane's probably gone to him and said she'll be dead. I could be reading into this too much, but there was something brewing, a cauldron that the king had journeyed to stir. Is that an Avatar reference? She just helped Knox or just told him basically everything and told him to leave. The last thing we see or the last thing we read is, is Knox left early that night, slipping out of the castle without a word to anyone. He's gone which is great, but I feel like we're gonna see him again at some point. I also don't know what's going on with Caltaine, the bitch. She seems to be getting high a lot and this headache that she's mentioning, it seems to be getting worse around Perrington as well. So I feel like something's going on there. If he's not killing the champions, then there's something that he's doing that's having an effect on her. Who the fuck is Kane? It took a while for the sound of flapping wings to fade. Is he Faye? Is he like the bad boys? He saw her face each time he closed his eyes. She haunted his thoughts, made him wish to do grand and wonderful things to, in her name, made him want to be a man who deserved to wear a crown. Oh, he loves her. Just about to start the jewels. We're just about to go into that. Caltaine has just put poison or something in her drink. So there's that, <laughs> which is gonna be interesting. We are on page 343, so we've got about 60 pages left. I don't know where this is going and I can't predict it too much. I know that obviously she's probably gonna win. I'd hope she'd win, otherwise I have no idea what's gonna happen. She wants to stay, Dorian wants her to stay, and Carl wants her to stay as well. So if she doesn't win, I feel like those two would do something. If she does win, then are the rest of the books her like being the, the king's champion? Jewel went done for her, Kane obviously won, she's just won. And she walked off after leaving a handkerchief on him. I love that. <laughs> Cal, was the handkerchief really necessary? Fuck yeah, it was. Jewel is just about to start with Kane and she has been poisoned. Her vision is going blurry. This doesn't look good. I kind of feel like the king has been told by the Duke that she's been poisoned because he didn't give her a chance to rest. He didn't give her any like anything. So I kind of feel like he knows and he just wanted to get her in the ring before she started feeling all the like effects of things. It's Bloodbane. Oh, I can't. I can't. <sighs> I was just really interrupted with a FaceTime from my fiance, so it's been a little while. He's gonna, he's on his way home, so I have 40 pages left to read in the next kind of 45 minutes before he gets home. We are currently in the duel between Kane and Selena, and just read Dorian and Cole's kind of perspective of it, realizing that something is wrong and they want to do something, and it's this whole like, what do we do? Blah, 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 blah. That's where we are. Let's carry on. <laughs> so Kane's talking about her family and her dad. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. She obviously seems really affected by it. He's just said, what was it like when you woke up between your parents covered in their blood? What's going on there? Why does he know that? And how does he know that? All around her were whispering, laughing, otherworldly voices. They called to her, but called to a different name, a dangerous name. Something, something dead stood before her. It was a man, his skin pale and rotting, his eyes burned red, and he pointed at her in a broken, stiff way. His teeth were all sharp and so long they'd barely fit into his mouth. That was helping her. There were two creatures now, and the second one had wings. It was grinning, grinning just as. Is she like, is it? He's just ripped off her amulet. Okay, so Nahima is drawing word marks, I can only imagine, in the air. Elena's here, Elena's here. So the poison has weakened her, obviously, and it's hallucinations, but C is used to use it. So I think what she's seeing isn't an hallucination, it's real, and it's like the underworld, or it's 
where demons are and it's real. So the queen is now taking her the poison away so to give her a chance. And the king nodded. He's just given Cain the go-ahead to kill her, basically. Oh, she stood. She's got up. Oh my god. I will not be afraid. A mark burned on her forehead in blinding blue light. What's on your face, Cain asked. The king rose, his brows narrowed, and nearby Nahima gasped. What is that? The king tried to kill her. The king has just given Cain the go-ahead to stab her. And Carl stood in and stabbed him. <laughs> what does the marks on her head mean? What does that mean? He was done with politics and intrigue. He loved her. And no empire, no king, and no earthly fear would keep him from her. No, if they tried to take her from him, he'd rip the world apart with his bare hands. And for some reason, that didn't terrify him. <laughs> Dorian. Oh, I'm so glad the bitch didn't get what she wanted. Caltaine can go fuck herself. The Duke's dropping her in it. You poisoned her. Why would you do that? Oh my god. I mean, he's a dick for doing that, but she deserves it. As she reached the doors to the castle, the Duke grinned at her and her dreams shattered. Oh my god. That is just perfect. So she's definitely got magic, whether it's gone or just hidden. She saw everything during that duel because of the bloodbane. It had that like effect on her. And Mahima's just said, magic calls to magic. So she was killing them. Cain was summoning them and she was killing them once they were here. She was drawing them under her bed. See, I knew she was being protected. I just didn't know who by. You have no idea what a nuisance it was to have to keep redrawing them every time you wash them away. <laughs> so she's just ended things with Dorian. And I can understand why, but I don't know. I kind of prefer her with him than Cole. And now Cole's like just found out that she's done it and he's all like, oh well, yeah, it's gonna come to your senses. No, be with Dorian. <laughs> Thank you for saving my life. Blood ties can't be broken. What the fuck does that mean? Is she Fay? No. I'm so confused. Oh, the foreshadowing though. Something big is gonna happen. Right, chapter 55, page 401. The king is a dick. I hate the king. Finished. Oh. I don't know what to even think. I really, really enjoyed it. I think 4.5 stars not quite five stars i don't know why 4.5 i am really really excited now to see where this is going this is, hasn't really ended on like a cliffhanger not like i'm itching now to read the second one because they left this off so well but i am really really excited for the rest of the series and kind of what's going to come next i am ready for all of the emotional turmoil i think i'm going to experience i think there's lots of things that have been set up in this book which i think when is needed like in akatar the first book kind of sets things up for the the rest of the series and this has very much done the same thing i've enjoyed it 4.5 not quite five stars i can't tell you why but very very good book nonetheless I'm gonna jump straight into the second one because my plan is to read one after another. So I'm gonna jump straight into the second one later on today or tomorrow. So that has been the reading vlog for Throne of Glass. I hope you've enjoyed this like reading along with me. Um, it's been fun to kind of speak my thoughts as I'm reading. I don't do that very often, so that's been quite fun. I hope you've enjoyed watching the video and kind of seeing all of my reactions to things. I'm hoping that most people who've watched this have already read the book, so they're going to be watching going, yeah, I had the same thought, or no, you're so stupid, <laughs> whilst they're watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss the next videos for the other books in this series, and I will catch you guys next week. Mm -hmm.